Rolled away, rolled away, away. I remember my burdens rolled away. Rolled away, rolled away, rolled away. Rolled away. Rolled away. Rolled away. I am happy since my burdens rolled away. Yes, I'm happy since my burdens rolled away. Yes, I am. Please stand. Hallelujah. God bless you this day in the precious name of Jesus. Earlier this week, I was listening on YouTube to a minister, and he was, some of his minister, uh, he was talking about the com a communist country and underground churches and how difficult it was and, and with all the persecution that goes on. And there was a lady from the audience asked if she could comment on his statement. And he said she, li she said she lived in one of those communist countries for a while, and although it was bad, but when she was immigrated here, she said that it was actually harder to live here in the United States uh -huh. than it was in her communist country because of there being so many more kinds of demonics and evils here in the United States. Yeah. She said when you live in a communist country, she says it is, it is so narrow, narrowly dictated that they don't allow for the lifestyles that, so, so to speak, of the rich and famous here in the United States. And, and I just thought that was something that was very interesting. You know, I wouldn't have thought that, that, you know, everybody thinks that if you live here in the United States that, you know, you're free and easy and so on, but it, but it would be easier to do lots of things. But they, we put up with a lot more demonics, they said. Yeah. And I wanted to read that from... Uh, Psalms 46, God, the refuge of his people. God is our refuge and strength, mighty and impenetrable, a very present and well-proved well help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change and though the mountains be shaken and slipped into the heart of the seas, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its roaring, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy dwelling places of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, his city. She will not be moved. God will help her when the morning dawns. The nations make an uproar and kingdoms totter and were moved. He raised his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold, our refuge, and our high tower. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is great.
Let your spirit rise within me. Come on. You set my feet a dancing and my heart rejoicing and my mouth is. Oh, yes, he does. Let your spirit rise within me. Rise up. Yes. Let your spirit rise within me. Yes, he is worthy to be praised. You alone are a great God and worthy to be praised. I will arise, I will arise and, go forth and go forth in the name, in the name of the Lord of hosts. For he has conquered every foe. Oh, by his name, oh, by his name. I will declare he is the Lord. He's the Lord. I will trust. I will trust and not be afraid. Or who will rise and go forth by His name? Let Your Spirit rise within me. Let Your Spirit rise within me. You set my feet. Oh yes, He does. And my heart rejoicing, and my mouth. Let your spirit rise within me. You set my feet a dancing and my heart rejoicing and my mouth is singing out your praise. You alone are a great God, worthy to be praised. Yes. You alone are a great God, worthy. I will arise and go forth, and go forth in, the name in the name of the Lord of hosts, for he has conquered every foe. Oh, by his name, oh, by his name, I will declare, I will declare he is the Lord. He's the Lord. I, will trust I will trust and not be afraid. I will arise and go forth. Yes, hallelujah. He set my feet a dancing and my heart rejoicing and my mouth is singing your praise. Let your spirit rise with me. He set my feet a dancing and my heart rejoicing and my mouth is singing your praise. For you alone are a great. You alone are a great God, worthy to be praised. I will arise and go forth, and go forth in, the name in the name of the Lord of hosts, for he has conquered every foe, every foe by his name. By his name, oh, by his name I will declare, I will declare. He is the Lord. I will trust. I will trust and not be afraid. I will arise and go forth by His name. I will arise and go forth in the name of the Lord of hosts. But He has every foe by His name. I will declare, he is the Lord. He's the Lord. I will trust. I will trust and not be afraid. I will arise and go forth by His name. Yes, Lord. I've heard it all. We've all now heard the it. the Savior came from glory. Yes. Now he gave his life oh, thank on God. Calvary. Thank God. 
to save a oh, wretch like hallelujah. me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood atoning. Then I repented of my sin and won a victory. Yes. Oh, victory in Jesus. Come on now. My Savior oh, he's my Savior. Forever. Oh, thank God he did. And he bought me yes. with his redeeming oh, hallelujah. He loved me ere I knew yes. him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cliff. Oh, thank blood. God he did. Of his cleansing power revealing how he made the lame to walk again and he caused the blind to see and then I cried dear Jesus come and heal my broken spirit and somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory me and he bowed me with his reach oh thank god he did he loved me ere i knew him and all my love is due him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing oh, hallelujah. i heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory and i heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day i'll sing up there the song of victory well praise him for oh, victory yes. Jesus, hallelujah my savior forever he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming oh, blood yes, he, he loved me ever i knew yes. and all my love is to him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Oh, oh victory, victory in Jesus, only in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due plunge me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. Oh, hallelujah. Give him praise oh, in his house this morning. He loved me ere oh, I died with him. him. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, he brought to me the victory. He He's the King of kings. He's the Lord oh, of lords. He's the bride of the Lord. Hallelujah. Sing praise magnify to his name Lord. this morning. What a mighty God, what a mighty God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have given me the oil of gladness, garment of praise, instead of oh, oil, yes he has. shining crown, instead of ashes, Glory in the place of this Oh, day. thank God he did. I delight greatly in you. Yes, I do, Lord. My soul rejoices and sings. Oh, you took my empty yes, life. And you filled it with every good thing. You have given me the oil of gladness, the garment of praise, instead of more shining. When my life was without purpose, you gave me a reason.
time to live. Now my heart is filled with thanksgiving for all the riches you give. You have given me the oil of gladness, the garment of praise, instead of more shining crown, instead of fashion, glory in the place of despair. Will I delight greatly in you? Oh, my soul rejoices and sings. For oh, you took my empty life and you fill it with every good thing. You have given me the oil of gladness, the garment of praise, instead of more shining brown, instead of ashes, glory in the place of despair when my life was without purpose you gave me a reason to live now my heart is filled with thanksgiving for all the riches you give you have given me the oil of gladness the garment of praise instead of morning shining crown instead of ashes Glory in the place of despair. Oh, you have given me all of gladness, garment of praise, instead of more shining crown, instead of ashes. Glory in the place of despair. Oh, you have given me the oil of gladness, garment of praise, instead of more shining crown. Glory in the place of this day. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm from the fears, the drop and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fear is still, when strife is cease, my comforter. love of Christ I stand in Christ alone who took on flesh fullness of God in helpless faith the gift of love and righteousness born by the one he came to save till on that The wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on Him was laid Here in the death of Christ I live There on that ground His body lay Light of the world by darkness slain then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he arose again and as he stands in victory sin curse has long its grip on me for I am his and he is mine Walk with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power Can pluck me from his hand till 
God returns or call me home here in the power of Christ I'll stand there in the ground his body Light of the world by darkness lay, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he arose again, and as he stands in victory, since God says, the precious blood of Christ, brought with the precious blood of Christ. Oh, oh, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Hallelujah. In Christ alone, my salvation stands. Amen. And no other is there salvation found but in Him and Him alone. Amen. Glory to God. We're so grateful for each and every one of you this morning. We're happy that you came this morning. Shake hands this morning and be friendly. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let everything that I pray. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everything that I pray, praise the Lord, when old Satan tried to fool you, you just shout, hallelujah, everything that I pray, praise the Lord, come on now, oh Paul and Silas were in jail, they Think praise about the Lord, it. Yes. yes, no one would Hallelujah. go there and bail, they praise the Lord, their hands and feet were both in stocks, and the jail began to rock, it always faith. Sing and shout Glory and praise God. the Lord. Hallelujah. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. When old Satan tries to fool you, you just shout. Hallelujah. Everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Jesus calmed the troubled sea. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. The lame would walk, the blind would see. Praise the Lord. Whoa. Oh, he's the same today uh, as then. Yes, what yes. we need are holy men. Trusting in God's Whoa. word, my friend. Praise the Lord. Let everything that I have breath praise the Lord. Let everything that I have breath praise the Lord. Glory. When old Satan tries to fool you, you just shout. Hallelujah. Everything that I have breath praise the Lord. Everything that, that hath breath, praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Everything that hath breath. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, praise hallelujah. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Hallelujah. Uh, I, uh, as we were singing, uh, I was thinking of uh, David, and uh, I think God's kind of changed my message. I'm not preaching it yet, but uh, he happened to do that to me on occasions. And, uh, but I always want to hear the voice of the Spirit. Amen? I want to do His leading and guiding. That's what this is all about. Amen? We didn't come to please ourselves or tinkle somebody's ear. We come to give the truth that the Holy Spirit drops into us. Amen? And so this morning I really felt like God wants to drop something into our spirit this morning. But I, I, I want to read these scriptures in, in Romans 8. And these are some of my favorite scriptures. 8.35. Who, who? How many, how many knows who is? <laughs> Winnie and the Pooh. Uh, there's a who there in that. <laughs> but he says, who shall separate us from the love of God, of Christ? And he goes through a whole list. 
famine, nakedness, pearl, sword. And he says, then he goes on and says this verse, which seems to kind of be out of uh, character. We are all as counted as sheep for the slaughter. Amen. Uh, where'd that come from? We're talking about victory. Now we're talking about slaughter. And, 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 but then he goes on in the next verse, and he said that uh, neither no, the principalities or powers or any of these things or angels or any of these things shall be able to separate us from the love of God. But he, I skipped a verse, sorry. He said, nay, in all these things we are counted as conquerors, more than conquerors in him. Amen. So when we go through all these things, brother and sister, it's the love of God that carries us through these things. Amen. Because we look to our own strength. We look to other people's health. But God wants us to begin to look to him. He said, nay, in all these things, you are more. You know what that word mean, nay means? Nay. It means nay. <laughs> I got you, didn't I? <laughs> but he says, nay, in all these things. And so all these things, I don't care if you're going, I mean, I don't care if you're going through the worst trial or the worst valley or the, you've got a horrible health conditions or whatever it is, but God says, in all these things, we are more than conquerors because of his love for us. Amen? Because he loved us so much that he was willing to give his son and whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And even the Bible goes on to say that he loved us before we loved him. You know that you cannot make God's love stop loving you? He loved you before you got saved, and he loves you when you get saved, and he loves you the same then as he loves you right now. Amen? Aren't you glad you got a God that loves like that? You know what our love's based on? You do right, I love you. You do what pleases me, and I'll love you. Come on. Yeah. I'm glad I don't have to please God to make him love me, because I'd never get that love. Amen? <laughs> but he chooses to love me this morning. And I just thought, nay, in all these things, we're more than conquerors. More than conqueror means to, be, uh, to have a decisive victory. Amen? I mean, love will give you a decisive victory. Amen? Love conquers all. Yes. Amen? Uh, brothers and sisters, people are all, we need, we need this, we need that. We need the love of God. Yeah. Amen? That's what's going to change this world is the love of God. You, Not all the other things, all the other programs they put in, and all the, we're going to do, and people are like, well, we're going to change this law, and we're going to, uh, but you can change all the laws you want, but you can't change a person's heart by law. The only way you can change a person's heart is by love. Amen. That's the only thing that's going to change our hearts is the love of God. Amen. Brother Joe, come on up and take up the offering this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to God. Let's all stand today. Beautiful day in the Lord, isn't it? Amen. Amen. Never fails to love us. Always he does, doesn't he? Amen. That's a good thought to have first thing in the morning. To wake up and say, I know my God loves me. What a thought, isn't it? So many people out there wake up every day and they don't feel love. They don't know what's going to happen to them that day. But we know one thing. Our God has us by the hand. He walks with us, not against us. He's by our side. He's our deliverer and our all-exalted one. Amen. Amen. Let's give back to what God has given unto us. Bring it to the storehouse today. Let's all bring our offering forward if we would. Give what you give. Give it in Jesus' name. Give what you give. Give it in Jesus' name. Oh, give what you give. Give it in Jesus' name. And the Lord will give it back to you. We'll give what you give, give it in Jesus' name. Give what you give, give it in Jesus' name. We'll give what you give, give it in Jesus' name. And the Lord will give it back to you. Yes, the Lord will give it back to you. Yes, the Lord will give it back. 
Press down, shaking together, running over. He'll give it back to you. Do you all stretch your hands this way? Father, we come before you as a body that we love you, Father. Lord, we give back what you've given unto us, Father. The thing that we know and realize, Father, you've always met the needs of this church, and you always will, Father. Lord, thank you for the blessing and chance to give back, Father. Meet the needs. In Jesus' name, the church said, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be seated. I'm sorry. You don't have to stand. Amen. You can sit down. Uh, too. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Amen. Anyway, this is, uh, we do want to uh, say Sister Sandy has joined our praise and worship team, and we're glad she did. Amen. Did my wife do a wonderful job this morning? Amen. Amen. All week long. I don't know if I can do this. I said, oh, yeah, you can. <laughs> Amen. Uh, she preaches to me all the time. I know she could preach to other people. <laughs> and, 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 and so uh, we are grateful for what God's doing in church. God's doing some wonderful things in people's lives, and we are so grateful. Restoration has started in some people's lives already. God is beginning to change hearts and lives. Amen. And we are so grateful for that. We're grateful for each and every one of them. We, as my wife said, we do. We hold you up in prayer every day. We, we come together, me and my wife, every morning. We have devotions and we have prayer time together. And we lift up the people of this church. And, and many others who don't go to this church, we pray for them also. But we're just grateful that we can do that. Amen. It's a privilege to pray for people. Yes, Amen. And so when people, uh, I, I, I have a big, I, well, I don't say I have a big following, but I got a following on Facebook, and, and I get lots of prayer requests. And uh, uh, some of them I don't know very well, and some I do. Uh, and sometimes when I get that request, I don't wait. I pray right then. I pray for them right then. Amen. And so uh, prayer is what's going to change things. The love of God and the prayer, when we begin to love God so much, we want to spend time with God. Amen. We want to spend time in prayer with him. That's how we get acquainted, by talking to God, right? How do you know somebody? By talking to them. Amen. Uh, uh, not by texting. Our society has become a voiceless generation. I mean, when you're sitting in a room with somebody and they're texting you, they're right there, you know, but they're texting you. <laughs> There's got to be something wrong with that. <laughs> Glory to God. Anyway, uh, we're going to do the penny march this morning for the children. Uh, amen. So if I can get these girls to come up and help me. Uh, where are you at? Where's my other girl? At? There she is. Hey, don't look too enthused now. <laughs> Money always made people happy, you know. <laughs> Glory. Okay, give me a drum roll, Charlie. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. First Sunday of the month, we always have communion. Yes. Amen. Amen. We do this, and often as we do this, we do it in remembrance of him for the price that he paid upon that cross. He shed his precious blood for our sins. He, sin he was sinless. He didn't deserve the cross. We deserve the cross. Amen. Amen. And so he died in our place so that we would not have to hang on that cross. Amen. 
He took our place. He was our substitution. Amen. And he became sin for us so that we might have fellowship with the Father. Amen. So we always honor him the first Sunday because we always don't want to forget the price that was paid for our salvation. The blood that was shed on that cross. The stripes that were laid on his back. Come on, brother and sister. Most men died from the scourging. They didn't even get to the cross. Amen. Uh, and, and so when they laid those 39 stripes on his back. And, and then they beat him unmercifully. They spit on him. They yanked his beard out. They, they said that his mother wouldn't even recognize him. He was beaten so bad. They crushed bones in his face. And... Uh, they, they beat him unmercifully and shoved that crown of thorns down in his head. Amen. And he paid all that. Not because he deserved it, but because we deserved it. Amen. He did it for us. Amen. Aren't you glad this morning that Jesus died for you this morning? Amen. Amen. Br Brother Joe, come on up. Brother Terry, will you help us this morning do communion? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Go ahead and pass. So I'm going to ask you to stand as we partake. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, I, uh, to me, when we do this on Sunday, it, it means something deeply to me because when I was lost, he found me. I didn't go looking for him. He came looking for me. Amen. And... And from that day, almost uh, probably 40 some years ago, some people they remember, I don't. I just know that when I knelt at that altar and I give my life to him, that he washed me in the blood and my sins were cleansed. And I no longer had to walk in guilt at any more because now I walked in the presence of his love. Amen. And I'm so grateful today for that. And I hope each one of you are grateful today. Uh, I'm just going to ask Brother Terry if he'll pray over the body. Father, we're so grateful for 
Jesus Christ who hung on the cross and died for our sins, Lord, in his broken body. And we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Take a knee. Thank you, Father. Thank you for what you're doing, Lord. Brother Joe, pray over the blood. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you knew the blood had to be shed, Lord. Because of our sins, Father, your Son came to us and bore his blood and washed us clean, renewed us and, rege and regenerated us, Father. We thank you, Lord, for your love that you showed us. In Jesus' name, amen. Take and drink. Glory. Hallelujah. Give him a praise offering this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Hallelujah. Don't you just thank him this morning? He's done so much for us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you'll put the announcements up, please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, this Wednesday night at 6 p.m., we will be having our Bible study, and immediately following will be our prayer meeting. So if you have prayer requests, please put them in that box out there. We do bring it in, and we pray over your prayer needs or if you know somebody who has a need uh on thursday night at 6 p.m we will be having praise and worship practice amen um and ladies today right after service if you would kind of hang around just for a minute oh. sister stacy and sister norma have something they'd like <coughs> to speak to you about so uh if you don't mind just hanging on for a few minutes and uh, they want to talk to you sa about something that Hallelujah. pretty important. Amen. 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 I want you to know that um, September 16th on the morning service only, Brother Charles Little Amen. from Kansas City, Missouri. Amen. Actually, he uh, lives in Africa at the time. We've known Brother uh, uh, Little for quite a while. Amen. And uh, we were introduced to him through uh, Brother and Sister Clark's ministry. Yes. And I tell you what, he has a word from God. Amen. And he's been a man that has always dedicated his life to prayer. Amen. And uh, when he was at Victory Tabernacle many, many years ago, I don't know, Steve, if you were there, but your brother David was. And uh, Brother Little prayed for people who had teeth oh, I remember that. issues. And David was in need of enamel. Yeah. And uh, not to give Brother Little any glory because it's God, right? Amen. Uh, when Brother Little prayed for him, he had enamel on his rotting teeth. Yeah. There was a lady, Sister Seward, who lived here in St. Joe, and she had a, 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 a cavity. And when he prayed for her, God put a, a filled that cavity in the shape of a cross. Let go. Now, gold, that's right, it was yeah, gold. gold. And if I remember correctly, she went to the dentist and showed him the cross, and I don't think he believed her until he took a sample of that and said that was gold nobody on earth knew. Yeah. That yeah. was nothing anybody he knew had Amen. ever seen. Amen. So is God real? Oh, yeah, he is. Does he, he even cares about your teeth? Yeah. May Praise add, God. May I add to that? Yes. David's teeth, when his teeth were filled he had several bad uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah. and uh in one of his fillings was a cross oh. etched in it oh okay. I didn't know that. and uh he had several teeth filled i mean it, it, the, in fact he seen his teeth and he walked past him and went on and uh, <laughs> he thought it was bad <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh right mm -hmm. then he, he was his teeth were filled yes and healed Amen. quite a bit Amen. yes my point being this you know, when we live a life, when we give ourselves to prayer, to Amen. fasting, and to the things of God, miracles will follow them. Yes. Amen? 
Amen. There is a price to pay for that kind of a ministry, and most people don't ever go there. But I'm going to tell you, Amen. you will enjoy Brother Little and Sister Little. They'll be going back to uh, Africa at the end of this month. But we will be honored to have them here Amen. on the 16th. It'll be here for the morning service only. So bring somebody. They won't be disappointed in the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Also, uh, we have just started our Sunday school this morning. And we'll be having that every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. I hope you can come out. Uh, men's breakfast is going to be this coming Saturday, September the 9th at 9 a.m. at La Peeps Restaurant. All of you are welcome to go, and you are invited to go. I think they have a good time. He always comes home happy. Uh, imagine because <laughs> somebody cooked breakfast for him. I don't know. But anyway, Lord. go and have fellowship with the men. Amen. You know, um, Amen. that's all I'm going to say about that. But ladies, don't forget to Amen. get with Stacy. And uh, Sister Norma, uh, at the end of the service, they have ran by me a couple things they want to talk to you about, and I have agreed. It's a good thing. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Hallelujah. Um, we're excited about what God's doing. People are starting to get enthused. I've had people come up to me and say, hey, what can we do? You know, uh, and, and I've always believed the ministry of this church shouldn't be contained in these four walls. That's right. But it should be out, you know, because uh, God has done something within our life and he calls us to be the salt and the light of the earth. Amen. And we are to show acts of kindness, not to we're to be kind to one another, but we're to be kind to show acts of kindness to those around us. Because you never know when that person needs that kindness in their life and it may just bring them to Christ. Amen? When you show that act of kindness. Uh, uh, I know that some have uh, been in the uh, fast food lines. Uh, how many knows the fast food lines? <laughs> the drive throughs you know. Uh, and uh, they have paid for the person behind them. Uh, and we always urge you to, to do something like that. I mean, if you can't do that, but do an act of kindness for somebody. Get your Christianity outside of this church. Amen? Show people the love of God, amen, uh, because that's what they're looking for, amen. They're not, uh, I, I'm not a Sunday-only Christian. I'm a Christian every day of the week, amen. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'm the same. I don't act different when I'm outside the church because the church is in me, amen. So I'm the church wherever I'm at, Amen. I'm in the church when I worked in the nursing home. I was at church in the nursing home. I prayed for so many nurses and so many people in that nursing home. Somebody said, you got to quit praying. There won't be nobody here to take uh, care of. I said, oh, yeah, there's always more people coming in, you know. Uh, but God's a good God, and Amen. that's what he expects of us. Uh, and so remember, you are the salt and the light. You may say, I'm the only person in the place. That's because God put you there to be a light. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You're not the only one. Elijah, he felt like he was the only one. Yes. And God said, oh, Elijah, mm -hmm. 7,000 haven't bowed the nail, knee to the bell. Amen. Amen. So don't get that Elijah spirit. I'm all alone. You're not alone. Even if 7,000, God was still with him. Amen. He said, never leave us nor forsake us this morning. Glory. Is there something? Uh, there was three things there. Okay. All right, I knew he was going to say. Go ahead. I'm not an announcement. You're not an announcement? <laughs> I mean, on your board. <laughs> All right. Should if I you put you up I think he was wondering if you had more announcements. Oh, okay. <laughs> Will you come up and sing with us? Sandy? Yeah, Sister Sandy. Uh -huh. You'll learn it as oh, you go. You know it. It's pretty you know simple. It. We always throw this at everybody, but it's really pretty simple. Just worship the Lord this morning. Amen. 
Ain't Jesus good? Don't you know? Ain't Jesus good? And so Ain't Jesus good singing? Hallelujah I just want to praise Him forever again. As I was walking down a road, the Lord spoke to my heart with love. He gave me strength. I just want to praise Him forever again. Ain't Jesus good? Don't you know? Ain't Jesus good? And so ain't Jesus good? He picked me up and helped me to stand to fight every battle that comes my way. His love is stronger than I ever knew. I just want to praise Him forever again. Ain't Jesus good? Don't you know? Ain't Jesus good? Ain't it so? Just want to praise Him forever again. He gave me life, forgave all of my sins. He gave me love to know right from wrong. He gave me life eternal forever in heaven I just want to praise Him forever again Ain't Jesus good Don't you know Ain't Jesus good I just want to praise Him forever again. I just want to praise Him forever again. I just want to praise Him forever
uh, Children's Church. <coughs> what? Okay. Don't forget, oh, I can't hear me up here. <laughs> That's where I get louder because I can't hear, okay. <laughs> um, listen, I, I want to remind you to pray for uh, Sherry's husband's family. Uh, the night of prom, there, there were two boys, they were twins, and the night of uh, the senior prom from Lafayette High School, uh, one of the twins was killed in a car accident and that was devastating to the whole family, of course. But just the other day, uh, the other twin was killed. And uh, hold them up in prayer. You know, there's a great heart-breaking, wrenching thing that goes on, I would imagine, if you lost a child. And so don't forget to hold them up in prayer. I don't know for sure when the young man's, but these were young boys. They just were old enough to graduate last year but hold the family up in prayer that god will comfort them give them peace and use this opportunity to turn around to save their souls amen i want to pray stay right here stay right here well we're going to pray this morning uh we're going to pray for uh, souls just grab somebody by the hand this morning as we agree father we come to you god and we're humble to be in your presence, Father. God, we are grateful for your salvation in each of our lives. We're grateful for your great love for us. We're grateful for the peace you bring to our lives, Father. And God, we just lift up these requests. We lift up this little child, God. Touch him in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. Restore his lungs. Move in this little child's life, God. We know you can do it. You've done it before, God. And we just lift him up right now and help these parents through this, Lord God. Strengthen them, Lord God. And God, this family who lost two sons, Lord. I don't know what it would be like, God, but I just lift them up right now, God. Comfort them. God, just help them to get through this, Father God. I know it must be so horrible, but God, just let your peace be there. Let your love surround them, God. Lord, we thank you for it. We pray for unsaved loved ones this morning. God, we pray for neighbors. We pray for those around us, God, that they would know you as Savior, Father. That you would speak to their hearts through our lives, Father God. God, just save souls, God. Move by the power of your Holy Spirit in this city, God. Let your Holy Spirit fill this town, God. God, we just come again, come to you, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, I was going to preach something, but I'm not going to preach that. I have up on the screen a scripture that means a lot to me. Hebrews 12, 2. Because I like the way the scripture begins. Fixing your eyes on Jesus. Because too, too much in this world, people are looking to everybody but Jesus. He says, fix it, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, who is what? The author and the perfecter of our faith. Amen? You can't be saved without faith. He that cometh to God first must believe that he is, and he's more. Well, well, I didn't got the first part. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Who, he who cometh to God first must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. So he says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. How many of us could look at that with joy? Because see, when we're going through things, we don't look at it as joy. But yeah, here is our Savior. He has been beaten. He's been rejected. He's been spit on. He's been every horrible thing you could think of to do to a person. And then, and then he's been uh, nailed on that cross. And then still the ridicule persisted. 
If you be Christ, come down from that cross. Can you hear the mockery in their voices? Amen. Here is the one who came to save them. They rejected him and hung him on a cross. Some people, I wouldn't have done it. Brother and sister, the whole crowd was in on it. There was not one disciple that stood up and said, no, 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 we can't let this happen. Not one person stood with him. But God stood with his son. Amen. And so when he says, scorning the shame, he didn't, he didn't love the cross, but he knew there was victory there. Come on, who would love the cross? Amen? Knowing you were facing that. And he said, and sat down after he won the victory, after he paraded down through hell and defeated the devil and all his cohort. It says he sat down at the right hand of the throne. You know what it means when he sat down? He'd done all he could. Now he was going to rest. Amen? He'd done his complete. It's, the Bible says on the cross, he said, it is finished. What you were saying is victory. It's victory right here. Amen. And so when we begin to look at this, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. Too often we take our eyes off him. We take our eyes off the cross. We forget the price that he paid on that cross. We don't live like he died for us every day. Come on. Now, I want to skip a few thousand years back. I want us to look at something that somebody had gotten their eyes fixed on Jesus and found him to be the author and the finisher of himself. Because, brother and sister, he is our author. He initiated salvation in us, and he will finish what he has begun. Amen. And so if you would look back to the book of Judges and, 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 all, and, and the book of Judges, I'm not going to preach the whole book of Judges. I could, but I'm not. But, uh, but in the book of Judges, uh, I want you to see something. People would do right and then do wrong. And God would send uh, 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 somebody to punish them. An uh, enemy would come in and overwhelm them. And, and then God would, they would begin to pray and seek God. And they would find God's grace and mercy and love once again. And he would send a judge to set them free. And it happened over and over and over and over. There's a pattern here, brother and sister. It's in Christians' life. Uh, they, they love God as long as everything's going great. Uh, but they get their eyes off him. And they begin to, to uh, begin to cry out to God why is this happening to me why, why am I going through this and, and, and sometimes it's because we stray from our eyes are not fixed on him whom has saved us and, pier and was pierced for us we begin to look at our situation and don't look to the author and the finisher of our faith anymore come on brother and sister because of his great love for us he did these things but in that book of Judges there was many times God set him free but I want to get over to 1 Samuel can, will you follow with me? Will you, will, will, can we take this walk together? In 1 Samuel, uh, there was still no king in Israel. And Samuel was raised up. And if you remember the story of Samuel, uh, his mother, she, she wanted the child. Hannah, just give me a child, God. That's all I need. And the other wife that had, so back in those days, they had more than one wife. I don't know why. It must have been crazy or something. But uh, one's enough for anybody. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. I forgot now. <laughs> Anyway, the other wife, she belittled her. But Hannah found grace in the eyes of God. And God gave her a child. And she said, God, if you give me a child, I'll give him back to you. And so when, Hannah, uh, when Samuel was 12 or however old he was, uh, she took him to the temple. This is your home. This is where God wants you. And she gave Samuel to the prophet Eli to work in the temple and and uh, when he was a young man he uh, Eli had grown fat and blind a lot of Christians there they've grown fat and blind 
They don't see God no more. They don't do anything for God no more. They just come to church. And they said, I did my duty. Well, if Christ said, well, I'm, I've just died one time. I'm not dying for you again. <laughs> and so he, uh, it says that Samuel was uh, sleeping and he heard a voice. And he thought it was Eli. He ran to Eli and he said, Eli, wh what do you want? He said, I, I didn't say anything to you, you know. And so he goes back and goes back to sleep. And here's the voice again. Samuel. Eli finally perceives that it's God talking to Samuel. He said, go back and say, here I am, Lord. And so he goes back and he says, here I am. Anyway, I, I want to go past all that. But I just want to tell you that God raises up people at times that we need in our life. And because of what God's sovereignty in our lives, because he knows what we have need of before we even ask. And as long as we keep our eyes fixed on him, as long as we trust in him, as long as we believe that he is able to perform what we have asked him to perform, because Bob, the Bible says God's promises are yea and amen to those who believe. Amen? Uh, uh, they're not just for a few select, but they're for all of God's children. Amen? And so he raises up the prophet Samuel to guide Israel, but Israel gets this thing in their mind. We want to be like the other nations. We want a king. It was never God's plan for Israel to have a king. God was their king. He would lead them. He would send his prophets. He would send his people to guide them where they needed to go. He never wanted a king in Israel. Do you know what I think, too? God never wanted denominations. Never was God's intent for a denomination to be built. God always give us truth to set us free from the tyranny that we was living in. Amen. And so they, Samuel finally gives in. God says, it's all right. Let them have their way. way. So Samuel tells them, boy, when he becomes king, there's going to be a heavy price to pay. And so God raised up Saul. And they say Saul was seven foot. He stood above all, everybody, his head above. Uh, and he looked like a, a young lion, you know, just all the persona of a, a, of a charismatic person that would just draw people to them, you know. And, and, and so people flocked. Uh, I, I'm going to go through the whole story because I want to get to David, but I, I just want to tell you that sometimes how we look at things is wrong. People seen Saul as the one, but he was not the one. Amen? And people look in this world today, and they see this one as the one or that one as the one. The Bible tells us in the last days there will be false messiahs all over. People who proclaim they are the messiah. Even in this world today, I think the last count was like 300 people who proclaimed they're the messiah. Today. Not, not, not back in the Bible, but today. Amen? And, and so uh, the, the devil is always trying to get our focus off him. Let our eyes be what? Fixed on him. Amen. Because he's the only one who can truly deliver us. So what I'm getting at is this, that when Saul fell from the grace of God and he, he decided to do things his own way with a lot of Christians, we, they decide we're going to do it our way. We're tired of waiting on God. We're going to do it our own way. That's what churches have done. They don't allow the Holy Spirit to move anymore, so they're going to bring in the big entertainment. They're going to pay big money. They're going to draw the crowds. But how many souls are being changed? How many lives are being touched? Come on, brother. God is not in entertainment. God is in souls being saved and filled with the Holy Spirit and living for Him with, and knowing His love and all He does. He wants us to get our eyes fixed on Don't get your eyes fixed on a preacher. Don't get your eyes fixed on a brother or sister, but let your eyes be fixed on Him. Amen? Because He's the only one that can teach you how to love. He's the only one that can bring joy to your life. He's the only one that can give you peace in the midst of a storm. He is the only one. Get your eyes fixed on Jesus. So there's a little shepherd boy, seventh son of seven sons. No, he was the eighth son of seven son, of eight sons. And so Samuel gets a notice from God, go anoint David instead of Saul. 
So he goes. He, he does it secretly because he knows Saul ain't going to like it. And so he goes, and, and uh, Samuel brings all his sons. Uh, oh, I think one of them was named was Elkanah. And, oh, man, he, he's got to be the one. Look at his physique. He's, he's kingly looking. He's, the, he's got to be the one. God says, not him. So Samuel brings all his sons, and, and, and I mean, uh, uh, Jesse brings all his sons before him, and God rejects every one of them. Because too often we are looking at something that God, we're looking at a man's outward appearance. God's looking what's on the inside of a man. Amen. And so uh, he said, don't you have another one? Well, there's David. He's the little shepherd boy. He's out taking care of the sheep. Well, he said, bring him in. David was like five foot something. You know, a big man. Samuel said, that's the one. God said, anoint him king. And I get into all of this is this. David received an anointing from God. You know what the anointing involves? It involves God's love. It involves God's peace and God's joy in our life. Amen. When the anointing comes in our life and that presence of God fills us, it changes our out view of things. We don't look at things the way anymore. We don't walk the same anymore. We don't talk the same anymore. I got to tell you this, that when that anointing fell on David, uh, uh, something happened in, to him, in him. His heart was already right with God. He had a heart that was toward God. But it tells us in the story, we go a little little farther down the line here uh, and it tells us that uh, they, it was a war between the uh, Philistines and Israel and there was a great uh, warrior from the Philistines and his name was Goliath we say Goliath we think of something big don't we Goliath you know big nine foot eleven foot whatever here you want whatever measurement you want to use he was a big guy most basketball teams would have loved to have him and and and, uh, and so every day he's out challenging. It says for forty days and forty nights he challenged the Israelites. He got out there every day. Oh come on, one of you, one one of you face me. Come on, won't you fight me in battle? And we're not talking about wimps here. We're talking about warriors who have fought battle after battle under Saul. Yet when one man stood against them, they all quivered in their boots. Not one, not even the king Saul, who was seven foot, would even go out and face him. Come on, brother, sister, because God has a way of deliverance, and it does not involve what we always think. Amen? And so here comes, uh, Jesse calls from David uh, from the sheepfold. He said, David, I want you to go see how the war is going and take provisions for your brothers. Uh, uh, and so David goes, and he hears Goliath. And David's question was what all of them should have been asking. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that would defy the armies of God? Who is he? Because David had already faced a lion and a bear and killed him with his bare hands. Come on. God sent a deliverer in the midst of the camp who did not look like a deliverer, who did not act like a deliverer, but he was who God sent in that place and that anointing was on him to set the captive free and to open the blind. I'm telling you, God sent a deliverer. His name was Jesus. Uh, he died on that cross to set the captive free, to open the blinded eyes, to defeat the giant in our life. He is our deliverer. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. So when David gets there, he doesn't get encouraged. There's one brother who's taking care of those few sheep. When you feel a spirit rising up within you, God is raising up some deliverers in the body of Christ. People who will step forward and say, I'm here. 
not only just for a whole bunch of people, but for somebody that walks beside you or somebody that you work with or somebody in your family. God is raising you up to be a deliverer, to set the captive free, to open the blinded eyes. This is not a one-man ministry. This is a body ministry, and the body ministers as one as a whole. Come on, brothers and sisters. So God is raising up some Davids in the body of Christ that will begin to say, Hear my Lord. I may not look like much. I may not have the physique of others, but I'm here. Don't look at yourself in the wrong light. Look at yourself as God sees you. What did he say earlier? Nay, and more than conquerors through him. That's what God sees you as, a conqueror. He doesn't see you as one struggling along, trying to get by. He sees you conquering. And so God raises up David and, 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 and somebody says, well, hey, we'll tell Saul, this guy here, he said he'll stand before him. Somebody will do it. It's not the big guy that you think. So Saul tries to put his armor on David. David, Saul is seven foot, David's five foot something. How do you figure that's going to work? He said, I can't do this. I've, I've got to go with what God has given me. Brother and sister, don't look to somebody else for their armor to help you deliver somebody. Look to what God has placed within you. Amen? What God has placed in you. God has placed in you what you need to deliver that person. Come on. Don't look to somebody else. Don't look to a preacher. Look to yourself. Because the God of all creation dwells within you, just as he does in me. And brother and sister, as David began to, he began, he, he just said, oh, I'm just going to take my sling. Okay, nine foot, five foot. Four foot difference there. I'm taking a sling. It says he stopped and picked up five smooth stones out of the brook. Goliath, the enemy never stops, Brother Charlie. Never. He never gives up because he wants to beat us down to make us think we're nothing when we are something in Christ. Amen. He always wants to tell us how, how unworthy we are or how we are not capable or how that we need help. We need help, the help of the Holy Spirit in our life. And so David picks up five smooth stones, and he walks out to the battle uh, field, and there stands Goliath, and Goliath looks at him and thinks, What am I, a dog? <laughs> Did you send this little rut? I'm paraphrasing. You won't find that in the Bible. <laughs> but it's in essence the same thing. I'm nine foot something, and you send me a little guy. He, uh, it looked impossible. Brother and sister, we can't look at the situation. We've got to keep our eyes fixed on him. Amen? Because if we look at the situation, we will fail every time. But if we look to him who gives us the power to overcome, who gives us the victory on that cross. Come on, brothers and sisters. David wasn't looking at Goliath. He seen God. He didn't see how big Goliath was. That's what everybody else seen. That's why none of them would come out and face him, because they compared themselves to him and realized, I'm not adequate. That's what Christians have done so many years. They've compared yourself to somebody else and said, I'm not adequate. You are adequate because God called you to do that. Amen. And whom God calls, God qualifies, brother and sister. So you may not feel like a David, but there's a David in you just waiting to rise up and slay the giant that stands before you. Come on, brother and sister. It's time we quit feeling sorry for ourselves. It's time we quit crying the blues. It's time we begin to give God praise and glory for the victory that has already been wrought in our lives. Come on. We got to look at things differently. Got to look at Jesus. David said, this day, not tomorrow, not yesterday, this day. Come on, brother. Victory's not tomorrow. Victory's today. 
Victory's not yesterday. Victory's today. God's doing something today in our lives. Come on. He said, this day, God shall deliver you into my hands. This day. Come on, brother and sister. Some of you are David's. You need to raise up and say, God, this is the day. I'm going to deliver. I'm going to set the captive free. I'm going to open the blinded eyes. And he said, this day, God will deliver you in my hands. And David didn't wait. Faith doesn't wait around. Faith is action. Faith faith moves. Amen? So David charged him. Slinging that thing. Picking up momentum. And when he let it fly, it smacked him right in the head. Sunk deep down. Knocked him flat on his face. And David took that big man's sword, he probably couldn't hardly lift it, and cut his head off. Because, brother and sister, it's not enough to knock the giant down. You've got to cut the power of him out of your life. Come on. Too often, we get him down, but we don't cut him down. You know, we don't get rid of him in our life. We allow that residue of that to be in our life. Come on, it's time we got rid of those things in our life. And time we become that David, not only to knock that giant down, but to slay that giant. Slay that giant of fear. Slay that giant of doubt. Slay that giant of unbelief. Slay that giant of hate. Slay that giant of anger, of woe is me and that poor me spirit. Come on, slay that giant. Realize who you are in Christ. That when you get your eyes fixed on Jesus, you're never going to be the same anymore. You're not going to act the same anymore. You're going to love people like you've never loved people. You're going to be strengthened and encouraged by him every day because he's a God of gods and he gives us fresh manna from heaven every day. Amen. Praise the Lord wasn't my message but it's what i felt god wanted us to hear because god is trying to raise some of us up we're not set here to fill a pew we're set here to be charged up and powered up and take this gospel to those around us share the good news because i i thought of this thing and i'm getting ready to close but i thought of this uh if you was out and you, uh, you was by a body of water, and you seen somebody drowning. Would you not do everything you could to save that person, brother and sister? There's people drowning around you all the time. People who are drowning in despair. Cheaper, people who are drowning in sickness. People who are, are drowning from hurt relationships. People who want somebody to reach out and touch them. To show them. Come on. That's what we're here for. We're not here to be entertained. We're here to reach souls for Christ. I urge you. Begin to pray. Begin to ask God. Use me as you use David. Let my eyes be fixed on your son. Let my eyes be fixed on you. Let's everybody stand. Well, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Anybody need prayer, come on up front. We, the anointing's here. The presence of God is here. He is here to touch you this morning. Don't, don't sit back. Don't, want, don't, don't do that. Come up here and let God touch you this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Anybody else need prayer? I'm just going to wait a few minutes. Everybody bow their heads. Close their eyes. Father, just speak to hearts. God, I know some are struggling. God. I just pray they come today, God, and that you would speak to them, God, that you would strengthen them and encourage them in you, God. And if you don't want to come this morning, if you raise your hand, I'll pray for you. Just raise your hand this morning. Nobody looking around. Anybody? All right, let's pray. Father, right now we pray for Steve, Father. We just pray for a touch in his life, Father. God, the enemy fights him. And I've felt the battle so many times as I've prayed for him, God. But God, greater one lives within within him. The victor is in him, God. The David is in him, Lord. His music will set the captive free. Will open the blinded eyes, God. God, let there be an anointing on my brother. A presence of you, God. And God, that need in his life, God. That longing of his heart, God. God, let it be filled right now in the name of Jesus, God. There's victory today, God. Not